When I started this video, I had a pretty good idea of what I was going to do. I got a tester from eBay to see what the capacity was on all of these batteries. I was going to test it out and then I was going to put it in a real world situation and see which one performed better. As I got into this, it became very clear that there were some really big issues that needed to be addressed. I started out with the Milwaukee brand battery. I mean, when you buy this, you pay a premium, but you know you're going to get a certain level of quality. When I tested it, I saw that the capacity was about what you would expect, not quite what it was rated for on the tag, but really dang close. In the end, it showed 4.6 amp hours. That's pretty close. Let's call that a pass. Next, I wanted to test the off-brand battery that I already owned. I had used it a bit and was pretty satisfied, so I expected a result to be pretty close, maybe a little bit lower. The results of this test were a little bit disappointing. I expected it to be above 4 amp hours, but here you go, about 3.5 amp hours from a battery that was rated for 5. The worst part is after I did my test, when I went to charge the battery, it wasn't taking a charge, so I knew something was wrong. I opened it up, did a test on all the cells, and found that four of the cells were actually bad. So it's a little bit strange to me, but as I looked a little bit further, I saw some stuff that was a little more concerning. I had to rip apart the ribbon cables and really mess this up. But when I looked a little bit closer, I saw that these cells were not even rated for what they needed to be. In order to be a 5 amp hour battery, they have to be rated for 2500 milliamp hours. These ones were only rated for 2000, meaning that on its best day, this would only be a 4 amp hour battery. In an effort to be fair, I went ahead and tested a brand new off-brand battery from Amazon. Again, as you would expect, the results were not quite what you would need them to be. This one came in right under 4 amp hours brand new. So of course, I needed to open it up and see what kind of cells were in there. This one appears to be the LG AA HG2C1865 cell. When I look that up, it turns out that this is actually rated for 3000 milliamp hours or 3 amp hours per battery. As you can tell from the photos, they don't even look alike. So this appears to be some kind of counterfeit because it's supposed to be rated for 3,000 milliamp hours, and we're really only getting two. With some very low expectations, I decided to test out my 6 amp hour battery now. To no surprise, it didn't come in as expected. To my surprise, it came in even lower than the one that was rated for 5 amp hours. Of course I needed to tear this apart again. Upon disassembly, I found that these are the LG hd 2 c 1865 cells. When comparing to the listing, they actually look genuine this time. The only issue is that these cells are rated for 2100 milliamp hours. Not nearly what you would need to reach that 6 amp hour life. Just like I always do, I went ahead and put all of my findings into an Excel spreadsheet. I recorded the actual amp hours, the rated amp hours, the watt hours, and I think for my purposes, the watt hours is going to be the most important thing. Um, and I also put in together price to see, is this really a good value? In the end, you'll see on the last column, it's watt hours per dollar. The higher value means it's a better deal. So the best deal out there is the Waitley battery, and that's because it was really cheap. Uh, the performance wasn't great, but then again, it didn't last that long either, right? Um, the other ones, they're also a good value. So I think one of the things to know going into it is you're not going to get the advertised capacity from these off-brands. Uh, they're going to be really bad. And most of them really are going to be right around that 4 amp hour mark. So as long as you're doing your homework and you're considering that if they say 5 or 6, they're probably only 4 amp hours, then you're pretty good. The Milwaukee stuff, it's pretty solid, but you pay a premium for it. And so in the end, as far as value goes, it's not the best value out there. But if you need something that's just going to last a long time and you know it's going to hit what it says it's going to hit, you're going to have to pay to buy the OEM stuff.